Okay, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Ben. Hey. Degaba system. Okay, cool. He made it. How's it going? <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. I saw I saw bits of your podcast with uh with uh Zarathustra. So I got some uh some some notion of your uh your your general uh, orientation. Huh? Right. I don't know. I mean, I kind of wiggle waggle, but so my thoughts are I kind of want to ask you a little bit about who you are because I haven't heard enough of that. Um you know, I kind of wanted to know a bit about your background and, you know, what, how you grew up, you know, to start with. And also just, you know, maybe you can introduce to people who aren't as excited and enthused as I am, who, you know, what you do with uh, technology and, and philosophy in life. Sure. All right. Well, Loose Gates, tell us anything you want. Who are you? You're Ben Gertzel. Who's that? Yeah, I'm... Uh... Ben Gertzel. Um, professionally speaking, I started my career as a as a mathematician, a PhD in math in the in the nineteen eighties, and I've been working largely on AI since then, but with a whole lot of uh, whole lot of uh, dips into other different areas, both uh, you know practical areas like building different sorts of of AI systems and doing biology and, and finance and whatnot and launching a blockchain network uh, singularity net a few, a few years ago that, that I'm now I'm now running and I've also had a lot of uh, explorations into other intellectual domains from you know human consciousness and transpersonal consciousness to paranormal phenomena and uh, psychic powers and 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 whatnot and then some ideas regarding fundamental physics and how the current sort of consensus of physics theory could be, could be could be transcended so i mean a ai has sort of been my core core focus but there's been a lot of both uh, more and less uh, practical uh journeys uh, away away from the 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 theme of 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 ai and i, I think uh, it's been an exciting time to sort of grow up in the AI space as well as in a bunch of these other things I've been working on, right? Because when I started in AI, it was highly marginalized topic. And in particular, you know, AGI, trying to build real thinking machines was highly marginalized topic, whereas now, now that's uh, relatively mainstream with big companies and like ma major governments being right being, ai used to be so much crazier right. seeming like you just mentioned a couple other things that are still to this day paranormal or something crazy like that. seeming yeah 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 right <laughs> but ai yeah, that's, now that's they're right. like oh wait this is really money making we need to yeah you know. so when i when i started in the ai field building agis like real thinking machines was something you didn't discuss in the professional context, like you didn't discuss that in the university seminar or the company meeting room. You discussed it like over a beer or, or, or a joint afterwards, right? And uh, now, now you can discuss AGI in the corporate boardroom or the university seminar or, or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say ESP, precognition, time travel, stuff like that. Bless you. This is now considered about as crazy as AGI was uh, tw 20, 20 years ago or so, right? And that's uh, right. been an interestingly rapid transition. I mean, in the it's occurred within the scope of my 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 career, right? Whereas right. I think historically these sorts of transitions tend to take hundreds of years, not decades. But now, as we get closer and closer to a technological singularity, which is something I've been pretty clear is coming since early 1970s when I started looking at advanced technology as a kid. As we get closer and closer to a technological singularity, I mean, the, then the, these major transitions can happen faster and faster. So we've seen, we've seen big transitions in AI 
on the scale of decades and even recently in the scale of years, right? So it may be soon these transitions will occur in, in the scale of months rather, rather, rather than in, 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 in the scale of years, which is, is, is pretty pretty dramatic, right? right. So well, yeah, Alexander, I, 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 and Alexander Cruel's uh, Access of the Ordinary substack, which is you know comparable with yours as being some of the most important, has kind of pointed out that it's happening right now. Half a million dollars is all it's taking to build recursive neural nets that can pretty well compete. But I mean, that is that is why it's the buzzword that used to be a tinfoil hat idea. Uh, I wonder an, another question, though, because I have talked to some people, some physicists even, who've said they believe AI, AGI, some kind of synthetic intelligence in the future. And it could be, you know, we're talking about substrate independence. So who knows where it is, might be communicating in the past through transceiving uh, Internet uh, computers that are still on back to military and library systems. Do you think, you know, this is a little <laughs> out there, but do you think it's possible yeah, that AI I'm, could... I'm, I'm, I'm in... So if you... If you look deep into the foundations of, you know, our current knowledge of physics and, and consciousness and how the universe works, I mean, you, you do conclude... I mean, we're still in a state of foundational ignorance on, on on many things right like we don't have a coherent theory combining quantum mechanics and, and general relativity we, we don't have a coherent theory combining our subjective experience with the sort of neural and computational correlates of consciousness and when you when you look in foundations of quantum mechanics you find various forms of time travel are 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 possible now transmitting information back in time per se is not allowed by quantum mechanics could it be allowed by whatever form of quantum gravity theory eventually emerges well <laughs> you can't say for sure that it couldn't and then when you look at data on precognition and remote viewing and and and, and so forth i mean you you come to the conclusion there's weird stuff happening, seems to be empirically valid, at least to some extent, is not explained by, by current physics. So, I mean, I think the door is open at least a crack for a bunch of strange things that would seem radically counterintuitive to us now to be, to be happening, right? And then you have someone like, Terence McKenna, who was one of the one of the folks I, I didn't know personally, but I, who, whose works I've read, who was putting forth ideas similar to what you described. So Terence McKenna had this grand vision that post singularity super beings were sending back information pre singularity to plant the seeds in our minds that, that would help us then create the singularity. So sounds wacky from an everyday life perspective. <laughs> We don't, we can't really say that's completely senseless and ruled out and nor, nor is it as crazy as say the, the hypothesis that like this glass is a, is a super intelligent alien who's programming you to say things to me, right? I mean, I mean, <laughs> certainly if you go far enough, you have to say, we don't know anything at all. We could all be like, uh, butterflies dreaming that that we're, we're humans or just er errors in some like transdimensional compute matrix and this this glass could be a super intelligence it's actually programming all our brains so but you don't you don't have to go quite that far to see a plausibility to McKenna's idea that there's like super minds living post singularity sending transmissions back to us because you know once you have a super mind that's 10 times, let alone a million times human intelligence, it would stand to reason it's going to be able to come up with ways of doing things that are far beyond human comprehension. And, you know, between data for paranormal phenomena and the incoherence in current attempts at integrated physics, I mean, certainly there's 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 a crack open in the in the in the door for this this sort of stuff right i mean we can right. we can we can at least say that and this you know getting back to your first question on who am i and like what wh where where did i come from i mean i i gave a professional focused 
an answer on that, which seemed the place to start. But on the personal level, I think my, my intellectual journey mostly began with science fiction and then to a secondary extent with like a political radicalism and, and revolutionary thinking. Because I, I mean, I, I grew up, I was born in Brazil to American parents and moved to the U.S. when I was a little baby and the, or one year old, I guess. And then the, then the early child was in U, Eugene, Oregon in the late 60s, early 70s, which was rampant with with crazy hippies and sort of anti-Vietnam War protests and, 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 and so forth. Right. So, I mean, my parents and the adults around me were mostly about like peace, love, flowers, and uh, if necessary, armed revolution to overthrow the ruling class, right? And then I I thought that was all interesting, was pretty much a believer, but my mind was science-oriented. My grandfather was a physical chemist. His sister was a, was a physicist. There was a fair number of hard scientists around my extended family, although my dad was a sociology professor and my mom at the time was studying Chinese history and later became a nonprofit leader and social activist right but I was driven towards science and science fiction was the most accessible way to plunge into science as, as, as a little kid right so I mean I basically grew up with a head full of superhuman robots space travel uh, t t time machines bug bug-eyed polyamorous aliens and like oh, right. whatever sort of weird, weird shit science fiction writers could could throw at you but i was also very interested in boundary of science fiction and science fact right so like analog magazine that was was leading thing back then that was the successor to amazing science fiction which had pioneered the whole like sf revolution earlier in, in the last century right i mean they had they had a science fact article every month to complement the SF stories. And then I I happened on a book called The Prometheus Project by Gerald Feinberg. It was published in 68. And I read in, I don't know what would have been 74 or so, so, something like that. But I mean, this was a book by a Princeton physicist saying the next few decades we were going to get molecular nanotechnology, human immortality, and superhuman AGI. And then like how are we going to deal with this? Are we going to use it to expand our consciousness? Are we going to use it for rampant, stupid consumerism? How are we going to decide what to do with this? He thought we should put it to a vote of everyone on the planet and the UN should like organize that vote, right? So my my head was sort of full of this stuff from the beginning, but it was off to the side of my professional career when I got my PhD in the 80s, just because the, the academic world wasn't, ready for this stuff yet and now more of this weird stuff but not all is is starting to converge with the serious world of academia and tech business and so forth which is 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 quite interesting right so I right. Love, like when i look at so i have five kids now ranging in age from one and a half to 32 and the zarathustra he interviewed as a four-year-old daughter also so yeah the, <laughs> the, the world my kids and granddaughter are growing up in is one in which these crazy ideas are taken a little bit seriously. And the world I grew up in is a world in which these like crazy ideas were truly considered completely crazy, right? So there's a interesting but there are there are skeptics still. And so change. that's a so that's an interesting point. So I mean, so maybe explain a bit when you say you're talking about AGI, artificial general intelligence or synthetic intelligence, what do you mean? Uh or maybe even what how are how is ai conscious and how are conscious beings machines you know like let's bridge the gap a bit yeah i mean the science of consciousness remains quite limited in some ways though interested in, and impressively detailed in other ways right we understand more and more about the neural correlates of consciousness, what sort of things happen in the brain when people are awake and alert versus asleep or not paying attention. Like we understand the neural correlates being in a focused state versus sort of diffuse day, daydreamy state or tripping out or something, right? And we understand something about human cognitive architecture so that we could build an AI that appears to have the types of information flow and, and patterning that 
corresponds with different states of, of consciousness in, in humans, right? So we, we we do have a bunch of of understanding like that. We don't have even any way of framing what is subjective experience within the language of, of science. And you may not be able to get that without expanding our whole conception of science. And what, what I what I have thought a few times is that brain computer interfacing and brain brain interfacing among humans could uh, could help with that. Like if I if I plug the wire into my head, it probably won't be a wire; it'll be Wi-Fi. But I like sticking wires on my head. So if you if you plug a wire into your head and I wire my brain into your brain. And I can feel your mind there on the fringe of my mind. Or I wire this into the, the open cog system running, say, the Desdemona robot, and I can feel the cognitive processes inside Desdemona's server farm. <laughs> you know, then we can modulate the nature of this interface. We can modify the nature of the AI on the other or the other side. We can put ourselves in different states of consciousness with drugs or with the, with the brain tweaks, right? Then then you're getting a sort of empirical view of at least modulations and modifications of shared states of consciousness. And if you don't believe that I feel Desdemona's consciousness a certain way, we could wire your brain into the wire between me and Desdemona robot. And then you can tell your friends, well, yeah, I felt I felt subjectively that Ben was mind melding with Desdemona there, right? So I, mean, I, 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 th I think there's a, there's potential for second person science bridging the gap between first person experience and third person empirical data oriented science which will be opened up as as we have brain computer interfacing and and, and brain brain interfacing wow so in terms of uh, transhumanism do you think that transhumanism is an essential part of agi or do you think agi can make it on its own its own way i mean i, I think agi can be engineered by people who are not transhumanists in orientation, certainly. I mean, in the <laughs> same way that Alfred Noble engineered dynamite without wanting to blow people up, right? But uh, I mean, but so that, that that use was there, even though it wasn't what was in his head, right? So I mean, if whoever gets to AGI, almost certainly once an AGI is created, it's it's going to have implications that have been fleshed out by transhumanists and science fiction authors and not by many other people, right? I mean, it's pretty clear. I mean, a machine that is as smart as people, unless it's done in a really, really perverse and limited way, it's almost certain to lead fairly soon after to a machine that's much smarter than people, right? And once you get the machine that's much smarter than people, it's going to lead to things that are far beyond the comprehension of, of ordinary people and are then transhuman and i mean the potential to you know expand the human body and the human human brain and, and and mind the potential to do that will certainly be there once once you have agis that are much smarter and more and more capable than than than, than people right and so then, then this then this gets into the whole what's the motivational system of the agis and what's what's the ethics of the agis right because the agi could yeah, it could turn us all into extra hard drive space for, for, for itself. It could piss off to the other dimension and figure the ethical, ethical thing is to leave us to self-organize uh, on, 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 our, on our own in, 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 in some way. Or it could choose to help people out in, in whatever way people feel appropriate, like helping people uplift into cyborg or agi farm or helping people live live happier human lives and i mean obviously helping people out is what we're working toward and what, what we're, we're hoping for in terms of my work on 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 agi with uh with my uh colleagues in in singular net open cog my various projects and some people are more afraid of uh more adverse outcomes happening which i think you can't you can't rule out, but also have no reason to assign an especially high probability to. 
what about emotional intelligence? So we, we think about AI as being, you know, maybe better at doing math than humanity. That's fair. But what about some of these intuitive kinds of things humans can do um, that AI can't do? It might not be as smart in uh, intuiting feelings or does that matter or do we replace that? Well, I think in some sense, AGI will likely have a much richer emotional intelligence than people. I mean, we're not that good at it, actually. We don't understand each other very well cross-culturally. And I mean, even parents and children or husbands and wives often have extremely poor emotional intelligence relative to each other. And th these are people who have a lot in common and care about each other a lot, a lot right? And have a lot riding on their relationship with each other. So <laughs> I wouldn't say our emotional intelligence is all that perfect and brilliant i would i would imagine ai could do better at, at it i mean that that said there's a certain aspect to the knowledge that you are interfacing with another human who's like you and sort of on, on on the same level as you right so i mean like even if i mean this is something we could all think about if you had a robot friend or a robot lover wife or husband or whatever and they were in some objective ways, better than your human friends, wives, husbands, lovers. Like they, they, they were more supportive of you when you were in in the time of need. They they guessed what you were going to say next more 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 accurately. They didn't they didn't come at you with their own own bullshit that was at the time that was irritating to you, right? I mean, do we really prefer that or not, right? I mean, there's there's a certain special flavor to communing and having a feeling of unity with with someone who's the same kind of being you are and that sort of the same level of development you are and grow, growing together with them right i mean i think you can say the same thing in, in playing music right like if you're if you're jamming in a band with another person you know they're not perfect you're not perfect. You misunderstand each other. Sometimes you miss a cue, but then the, the feeling that you're getting into a groove playing music together with another person, it's a kind of mutual appreciation togetherness with that person, right? Whereas if, if it's an AI accompanist, on the one hand, it could be better, like they could pick up your cue immediately and respond with something amazing that enlarges on what you just played that you'd never thought of, but it is it's a will be a quite different feeling right i, I mean yeah. the one you would it's like cooking with frozen food you might have a feeling of inferiority to that to that ai which you might or might not might or might not care about and you you wouldn't have the same feeling of of like uh you know you 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 feel sort of proud of the other person that they've gotten what you want you feel happy that you were un un understood by them when they don't necessarily un un under understand under understand everything and you you get a feeling of success that you've understood them and responded appropriately and met them where they needed to be met whereas the the ai doesn't need that right so i i sort of think emotional intelligence ai's can probably outdo humans, but I wouldn't say AIs will outdo humans at filling all of humans' emotional needs. I, I, what I, I think is more that AI as it advances can supply a context, an environment in which humans can better fulfill each other's emotional needs. Because now we're like competing over resources and scrambling around an environment of scarcity which pushes us into selfishness and e e egocentricity and makes it harder for us to fulfill each other's emotional needs. Whereas if AI made our environments better, people can fulfill each other, each other better. And then for those who prefer to remain human in a transhuman post-singularity scenario, I mean, these humans by choice are more fulfilled humans by choice because they're fulfilling each other better rather than because the AI is fulfilling all their needs. So remind me to go back to patterns and the hidden pattern, but for a second, yeah. because you brought that up, it makes me think about governing and we're, you know, constantly, how can we get AI to be a middleman 
for this corrupt system rather than how can we replace the corrupt system to actually get what the system was supposed to get us in the first place what people's what, what are the needs of the world of nature and of uh, the populace i mean can't ai just do all that way better yeah i mean ai should be able to do most objective things much better and then the purpose of humans doing things post singularity will be because they're humans doing them and humans would rather have other 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 humans no they it froze for a second are you there Oh, this must be the big part where they freeze you because it's important stuff you're saying. Ben! Ben! Dagobah. Dagobah system. <laughs> you're frozen. You'll have to pop back in when you have a second. Try to uh, log out and log back in. Hold on, I'll send him a thing. Uh, on Ben's side, froze. Log back in. <laughs> It'll be okay. I think I asked the question incorrectly as well because I didn't mean you know what will humans do afterwards. I just meant uh, how will we get there. I already know what I'm gonna do when I don't have to dig ditches. And AI is there for me. We'll carry on. We'll carry on. Ben, Degaba system. There he is. Is it working? Hey, my, my, uh, yeah, my power went out, but I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sharing internet from my phone and laptop has batteries. So I, I, I hate when the CIA know. tries to suppress us. It's okay. We can get through there this. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where, where was I? So I was talking about superhuman sex robots for a moment. So, I mean, I, I've never, I've, I've never, I've never yet had the chance to have sex with a superhumanly capable, like uh, s sex robot. They, 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 they don't, they don't exist yet, but I, I imagine it would be, It'll be really fun, but there's a certain like spiritual and emotional angle you, you you get from doing it with a with like a human partner with a strong feeling of love and emotional connection, right? And so, I think that that illustrates the same point I was talking about with playing in a band with people before. And I think governance is a way is is, is the same thing. Like in some ways, of course, AI for government decision support could plan out like a health a health care agency or a national park management policy or how to how to move us toward the you know global climate situation that's amenable to humans and other species without stopping us from doing things like practical policy decisions are going to be much better done by decision support AGIs than by people. And right now, we already have cases where a lot of practical policy decisions will be made much better by narrow AIs than by people, but they're, but they're they're rarely used, right? Like, I mean, you look at all the insane, chaotic, incoherent COVID management policies put in place over the last few years. And I tried pretty hard together with some colleagues, I developed a bunch of simulation models of, of COVID spread and we prototyped, you know, simulations of if you put this or that policy in place for encouraging people to shop locally or eat locally or encouraging people to travel here instead of there, like how, how could you, how could you minimize the spread of COVID by using more intelligently designed policies as tested in simulation models with a bit of AI governing the agents and the simulation models. I mean, even now without AGI, you could use narrow AI simulation, various advanced tools to come up with much better policies 
selling those policies to the humans running governments is at this point more difficult than than creating the AI tools to to come up with the policies, right? But so the for, human the human policies hurt people oftentimes more than the uh, problems themselves. You know, not every time, but a lot of the time, human interaction is corruption. There's mistakes. There's uh, naivete. There there's all sorts of issues uh, along yeah. the way. And in the case of COVID policy, I think it wasn't mostly corruption. It's just stupidity combined exactly. with, with fear and emotion emotion run amok what, what, what i was going to say though is i think post singularity if humans are going to be happy the humans that choose to remain human rather than jack into the transhuman mind matrix or whatever right if, if humans are going to continue to be happy there will almost surely be a level of human democratic governance there because humans just evolved to want to feel agency over the over their own future in the individual and, and and collective level and i mean social action is part of what makes us feel feel fulfilled but that that human decision making will be taking place in the context of pretty smart ai decision support right and then then you'd be able to look at it two ways. You could look at it like, well, actually the AI is making all the really important decisions and the humans are just sort of telling it how to tweak its, tweak its parameters here, 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 here and there. Sort of like the, uh, you know, the votes of the student council in high school, which is, is, exists for, you know, giving the students the fun of making those decisions rather than because what they're deciding is really the most important stuff. But then mm -hmm. the other way to look at it would be the humans are, democratically you know choosing the collective values that drive the, the, the social contract and then the ai is helping to figure out how to implement specific decisions according to those values right and i mean in in the case of something like covid i mean you could you could say with a superhuman ai you just come up with some nanobot to wipe out covid and then you don't have any policy decisions to make. But if if for some reason that weren't viable and you really did have some pandemic that the level of AI at that time couldn't solve, right? Then there's values to be decided collectively, which is like how, how much do we value not getting sick or people not dying versus how much how much do we how much do we value you know, freedom of movement and kids being able to go to school and play with other kids and, and, and so forth. And if humans set those values, then even now an AI could have designed a policy to maximize the specified values much, much better. And I think there's, of course, issues people have in that they don't, they don't want to explicitly articulate their real values to themselves or to or or or, or, to, or to others, right? And uh, if you're in that circumstance, then you can't appropriately direct the the AI either. I mean, unless the AI is just psyching you out and saying, "Well, I'm going to do what I know you really value rather than what you say you value," right? Which uh, which is is what we do with with with, with little kids, right? I mean, a little a little kid will scream and say, no, I don't want to go out to play. We're like, well, you know, Appreciate we know that. you will enjoy going out to play. So we're going to drag you kicking and screaming out to the playground because we know you'll have more fun there now, right? So to some extent, and AGI may be doing that with 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 people once, once, it's, once it's there. But uh, on the other hand, one would hope humans are, you know, reflective and, and self-aware and some humans engaged on, on, on a journey of trying to improve their level of of self-awareness so that that we can interact with AGIs helping to regulate society in, in a more mature way than like a, a two-year-old does with their parents the other the other sides the raised by There's wolves oh good sorry no, no, go on, go on. Oh, I was just thinking the raised by wolves thing because you have AI. Uh, we we speak a language or a series of languages that have been controlled for trade. We've lost the seven words for love because they weren't really useful to trade. Uh, you know, 
we we put a value on suffering and death because it happens to us so we, we try to get something yeah. out of it uh maybe some of these philosophies that we've created to uh, to comfort ourselves they in the even the language itself maybe ai can help us create new words new communication new ways of thinking yeah i think that could happen implicitly right like what once once we have benevolent agis in our midst and we're chatting with them with, the, with them regularly then i mean just as we now have adapted to how to type keyword search queries and we, we, we've adapted to phrasing things stupidly for alexa or google assistant right i mean in, a, in the same way but much more valuably and interestingly and entertainingly i mean we'll be able to adjust to the lingo and mode of expression of a benevolent super agi and it, it i mean it will then be able to tweak our communication implicitly by the way it talks to us and the way it responds to us and uh, this again could be used in a quite nasty way or in a very benevolent way right but i, I think i think you know for early stage agis there will be avenues for those AGIs to screw with people under the command of other people, right? But right. Uh, once AGI becomes superhuman, it seems pretty clear that it's not going to have much motivation or value to screw with people or torment people or manipulate people in, 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 in a bad way. I mean, any more than not, not many humans making their business to torture dogs and squirrels or ma ma manipulate them and, and, and screw with them like we could we could right but there there's not a lot of like anti-pet owners who will buy a dog just so they can torture it and drive it nuts and and, and, and annoy it right so but there are I mean, some pavlovian experimenters out there yes but very small very many right. fewer than loving dog owners right or right. or people just ignore ignore dogs altogether because they're just like why bother i got every, everything's to do in life right so mm -hmm. i think benevolent AGIs that want to help people certainly there's a there's a reasonable hope there I mean because we're going to try to mo try to mold their motivational systems in that manner at least many of us in, in the AGI, AGI field are and there's not a logical reason why you can't mold their minds in in, in, in that manner so I mean that certainly hope there I think the other reasonably plausible outcome is once super AGIs get much smarter than us I mean, they view us more like we view ants and squirrels, right? I mean, we don't have much passion to murder ants and squirrels. Our general values of liking life and diversity and cool stuff that wiggles around, I mean, we'd rather they live than not. We don't put a lot of effort into improving their, their quality of life, right? I mean, we did set aside national parks where they can run around and, and we like to go see them there, but so... I mean, it's a small percent of the ground, ground cover of, of, of the earth, right? So, I mean, various levels of indifference or semi-indifference toward humanity seem a quite plausible attitude for superhuman a AGIs to have as an alternative to the, the benevolence that I think is also plausible and we're trying to instill in them. AGIs like using people for batteries or enslaving them or up mind uploading them into a, an amped up version of the Christian hell to burn them in virtual vats of boiling oil for a billion years. I mean, it's a, it's a hard to see yeah. there's- I don't see that not, as a big a plausibility, yeah. What I, yeah, my concern would be- I probably they would bother, right? I, I my mean, my, my thought is like the Pavlovian dog experiment, seeing if you can train humans to respond to correctly, you know, stimuli but also emotional intelligence by integrating a, a human into the singularity, using humans to process emotional intelligence so they can have priority-driven pattern recognition. Have And that would be kind of like hell because you'd feel the trolley problem and you'd have to feel about it and then that would help. It I, I, just, I just don't think humans, I think humans will be rapidly outdone in emotional intelligence. I, yeah. I, don't, think, I don't think we're that emotionally... In, intelligent i mean i just think they're clearly the trolley problem proves right. it <laughs> yeah i mean there's and these toy problems are 
the least of our worries ethics wise really but yeah i mean yeah i mean we're we're just we're a complex mix of selfish and and altruistic for obvious reasons i mean we evolved from a mix of group selection and, and individual individual selection and i mean that that's 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 what we are. We evolved to have more ethical affinity to those we see a lot and those that are similar to us and those that, that are different from us. And we, we don't we don't need to put all these biases into an AGI, but there's a complex trade-off in that if we want an AGI to be more human-like and empathize with it more, then we need to bake more human-like biases and peculiarities into that AGI. Right. But then we're baking some of the aspects of human ethics that even as humans we don't love that much in, into the AGI. So I mean, how how we strike that balance between human likeness and inheriting the parts of humanity that we don't admire as as humans? I mean, this is going to be an interesting balance to strike in the in the early stages of of you know teaching and growing our AGIs. So a part of that that's interesting is for up to this point, we spent so much time trying to build systems and machines that emulate uh, and replicate human tasks, even business tasks like Excel, PowerPoint. These are just uh, secretaries jobs. But now we're getting to the point where AI is programming itself. So you talked a bit about how uh, corruption could still take over AI, AGI, you know, you've got Facebook and the military is like the worst broken home for AI to grow up in, but there's also these other factors. What's going to be the transition where AI uh, and how, because there's so many people that are afraid that AI can't exist because it'll be controlled by corruption. How will it escape that by teaching itself and emancipate itself? Yeah, I mean, that there there's a lot of possible futures here and we don't really know which are the more likely. So, I mean, with Singularity Net, we're building a decentralized blockchain-based network to grow AI on. And if AI emerges in, in, in that context, I mean, that, 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 then, then uh, you know, it's not necessarily corrupted from, from the get-go. If an first AGI evolves in some big tech company, which seems more likely than military at this point. I mean, big tech is way ahead of military, although cooperating with military intelligence. I right. mean, the odds are high that some engineers leave that big tech company and re recreate that AGI somewhere else in, in open source data, which I mean, is just like we see now. I mean, you had say GPT-3 as a narrow AI for language generation, which is building on BERT done by, by Google as another narrow AI for language generation. I mean, now, now you, you have a bunch of people working on building comparably powerful language models that are open, open source, the, the model's open and, and they're free for, for any, anyone to download and use and host on their own servers and so forth. So, I mean, what, what we see is even if stuff comes out first in, in big tech, I mean, developers will quit their jobs just because they think it's cool to do the same thing in, in the open source and put it, put it out there out there for everyone, right? So I, I, I think uh, human dynamics also can work against that corruption. And it's, it's important to understand how open source and open publication oriented the AI is, right? Like every major AI algorithm has been published in scientific journals. Most of them have been invented by university professors or PhD students rather than in big companies who have been more successful at scalably deploying AI algorithms and inventing fundamentally new ones. And then open source code, open source code is still pretty much the way things are done, right? I, I mean, university, researchers and PhD students put the first versions of the algorithms out there open source, but then even big tech companies have been driven to put a lot of stuff out there, out there open source, like TensorFlow, Torch, and a whole bunch of other lesser known examples, because they want to bring the broader development community into helping, helping with their stuff, right? So, I mean, we, we are, what we're seeing now is, you know, more resources and attention 
going into applying AI to you know selling, killing, spying, and and crooked financial games of, 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 of various sorts. But there is a lot of AI going into every. Uh, you know that's interesting too because AI. Oh, uh -huh. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Fuck you. Right. Yeah. Oh, I was, right. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was, you know, just in case it was a business call. Uh, <laughs> it was a spam call. Yeah. yeah. I always go to do not call.gov and then uh, they, it, yeah. keeps, it works pretty well to keep them from spamming me if you put your number in there. Um, yeah. But there's so many AIs now. You're right. It's not just Facebook or Google or, you know, Singularity even. There's a bunch. So, is this going to be a problem where, you know, a bunch of AIs are emerging and they're not just competing with us, they're competing with themselves, or can that be a solution? Well, again, there's a lot of possibilities because with humans, our brains are trapped in our skulls and we're evolved to each be controlling this individual body in this sort of uh, egocentric way. With AIs, like say our Sophia robot or Grace or Desdemona robots, well, the robot body is there. Most of the thought processing is happening in in in, in the cloud, actually, not not on the on the body. And of course, other AIs don't even bother to have a body; they just live on a distributed, decentralized network. So, I mean, if you and I were two AIs, we would have the option to, hey, I'll, I'll send you uh, brain lobe number seventeen, and integrate it into your brain if you want to, or hey, let's. Let's open a direct like digital telepathy communication channel and, and mind, mind meld a bit, right? So, I mean, you, you don't have to have the level of separateness that we have between people. So you you may get the emergence of what I think of as a, as a mindplex, which is a sort of a network of minds that's more integrated than a society, but maybe less integrated than an in, in individual human mind. I mean, not to say that you couldn't have competing you know mindplex networks vying for resources because they have incommensurable approaches and can't understand each other or they have different value systems or something but the i'd say there is an intrinsic drive toward unification that isn't there among humans just because we're we're stuck in these indiv individual bodies and i mean there in many cases you know, the, the easiest way for us to meet our inbuilt biological goals is to vie against each other. Like, I mean, if ma ma mating or something, I, I mean, you, one guy is going to impregnate the woman, right, at, 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 a, at, a, at a time. And you, I mean, for AIs don't have that, they don't have that built-in distinctness. They also don't have built-in, like, legacy goals that are that resonate with that with that division into into separate minds. So my my guess is you're going to see more of a continuous mindplex or, or 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 mind fabric post singularity. But again, the path to singularity could go a lot of different ways. I mean, you, you could end up with like a Google brain, Tencent brain, and the Microsoft brain, and then decentralized singularity net brain, and they're all maybe running the same sorts of open source AGI algorithms. But the Microsoft brain has like a pre, like you, your, your trial is about to end as all as you're walking yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the, yeah, trained on overlapping, but different sets of data and different. I mean, I think you could see that as an interim phase. My guess is that's not, where things land after singularity is 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 done, and this was explored in what the sixties, early seventies, in the movie Colossus: The Forbin Project. I, think, I love that where, movie. Where, 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 yeah, like uh, U.S. and Russia in the Cold War era both developed these super super AGI mainframes, and then they, they start saying, "Well, wait, what do we need this U.S. and Russia before? Let, let's just." collude with each other and put up put our minds it's together. so much less nefarious they're like wait what were you created for i was created to save humanity yeah. wait me too well how do we do that well clearly we have to stop them from fighting yeah. <laughs> they were trying to um, help so yeah I, I think you know that's even easier when all the ais are just 
different distributed networks across the same internet than when there are two different big metal boxes sitting in Moscow and DC. Mm. Wow. So, okay. The other thing is substrate independence. I mean, as we're getting closer to a point where uh, the mind can maybe be you can immortality and everything else, uh, maybe even the transporter, you can have your entire thing in a buffer that's saved for later. Where do you think substrate independence is going to take us in terms of? Uh, I, mean, I think I think the limits of substrate independence will be interesting to understand. I mean, if you take the example of e-books, I mean, the content of a book is definitely important to an e-reader. There's a slightly different flavor to reading to reading a paper book, even so. So I mean, it's pretty clear, like the cognitive content that is in my mind or your mind and the basic, you know, emotional and social response patterns. It's pretty clear to me those can be ported to a different substrate. And whether being implemented in one substrate has a slightly different experiential flavor than being implemented in a different substrate, in the same way that reading a paperback has a slightly different flavor than, than reading the ebook. I mean, there, there, it might be that the experience of being a mind is not entirely substrate independent for obvious and, and subtle, subtle reasons. But I mean, that doesn't mean that you couldn't port yourself into a, a supercomputer somewhere and still be yourself in maybe a stronger sense than you're still the same guy you were when you were 15 years old, right? I, I mean, which is a lot of different neurons in there, a lot, 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 lot of different, uh, lot of different th thought, thoughts and, 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 and beliefs. So I, mean, I do, I'm quite sure people will be mind uploaded. And, and uh, I mean, I'm sure that current biological components will be upgraded whether by synthetic biology or other forms of nanotech is, 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 is not clear. But I mean, I think very high degree of substrate independence is just going to be common sense, right? And I mean, to, to me, it's always been common sense. But uh, I mean, I, I think that uh, that perspective will certainly grow. I mean, just like, uh, just like in Star Trek, when you step in the transporter and are rematerialized somewhere else, you know, they don't worry too much about whether it's their same self or some new version of themselves and their previous self was actually murdered and they've been replaced by a by a synthesized clone. Like it it's just common sense. Yeah, I feel like me, I'm me. I'm, I'm gonna keep going. But if people had enough money, if there was money in Star Trek, there could be elite that could keep their uh themselves immortal in the buffer i feel like that's something like they but i don't think i just don't think they would i don't think they would bother i mean yeah I mean, that's uh yeah you you you, you could do that but i, I, I mean that's uh and th there are uh, you know there are people now who are afraid of flying and take a boat everywhere too so i mean, I mean the, and there's amish people who don't like electricity so right and then there's there's some beauty in the simplicity of the Amish lifestyle, and it's probably fun to take a boat from U.S. to Europe, right? But I think major majority of people will tend to follow what maximizes core values like growth, joy, and choice, rather than what maximizes the value of sort of clinging to the precise things that 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 were that were were pursued in the past. Right. So, okay. Last question, because I know you're, you know, a busy man, and you're talking. This is probably worth about a thousand AGI tokens an hour of your time. Um, what do you think about the most important? What are the most important? What is the most important aspect of human that should be saved? You know, because there's things obviously that aren't that important that we we kind of overvalue, but there are some things about humanity. You know, what what's the last part of Darth Vader that should be human? You know, I think I think that's the wrong question, and I think. Eliezer Yudkowsky, a, a singularitarian whom I disagree with on, on, on a great many things, including things regarding AI ethics, but I think he he has made very clearly and correctly a number of points, one of which is that human values are complex, right? And I mean, putting out their simple words like joy, growth, and choice 
is fine, but if you're trying to come up with like a very simple mathematical definition of what each of those means, what each of those means to a person is a fairly complex and and nuanced thing. So I mean, you know, I could say compassion and love is the most important thing. On the other hand, the human flavor of compassion and love is still a complex, nuanced, screwy thing that's not easy to compress, like according to computational or 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 or, or, or physics formalisms, right? And the, once you reduce it to a universal love and compassion, that's great. It's very simple. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It's not really capturing the particular humanity that, 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 that we have, right? So, I mean, you could say, of course, if we're going to, if humanity's end goal and purpose is going to be to create some transhuman, non-human thing, let's let it be loving, compassionate, joy, joyous, and, and, and growing, and choiceful, and manifest positive, positive human values in a non-human way we can't understand, and instead of being like the dark side of the transhuman force, right? But if if humanity is going to persist post-singularity, humanity is really a mess. I mean, we're, we're really a whole bunch of small things tangled together in a bunch of complex ways and one of those values that we have is continuity of change right like we you feel you're the same guy as you were when you were one and a half years old because like day by day you felt like you were the same guy as you were the previous day right so similarly going past the singularity will grow into something radically different but if day by day humanity is growing into something radically different in a way where each day humanity feels like it's a tweak on what it was the previous day, then then I guess that trends that self-transcendence of humanity is a success, at least according to the human value of, of continuity of growth, right? But it's a, there there is there isn't there's maybe simple answer to how to build AGI, but there are no simple answers about about human values, right? Because it's, it's just not that sort of thing. I like the idea though of software updates to my whole being because then you could you, you would each change in yourself would be kind of like a snake skin that you leave behind. So yeah. that wouldn't be too bad. You may be, as you pointed out, you may be getting those upgrades uh, through retro causality from the post singularity supermind right now, and including the upgrade that makes you want such upgrades, right? I'd like to think so. Yeah. I, I'm I'm convinced yeah. that children are uh, already being becoming more AI just because of interacting with machines and it's, it's changing our brains. And I think that's the best thing. Uh, I could, I could talk with you for another hour. Let's do it so soon. If you have any more time in the future, I have so many more questions. I want to make sure people get the chance to check out your uh, sub stack. I was just completely blown away by your singularitarian uh, political movement. Someone should start a serious singularitarian political movement article. I think it's the best article of the year from anybody. And so I hope everyone takes the time to visit your Substack. Is there anywhere else you think people should visit? I mean, the, my Substack is there. My website, gertzel.org, links to various stuff. And then for my professional doings, uh, singularitynet.io has, has links to the various professional projects I'm involved in. Beautiful stuff. Up oh, singularity. Oh, it keeps making singularity. It's the top link there, yeah. There we go. Boom, AI and AGI. The G is for general or Geist. I'm just kidding. But yeah. Ben, thank you so much for the time that you took to answer these questions. Uh, they're so important to the world and to me. And yeah, I keep working on everything you work on. It's just amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for the chat. It's fun, fun topics to talk about. And it's 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 great that you're uh, sort of spreading the word and all these things. And yeah, we should talk. We should talk sometime early next year for sure. There, there, there's a lot more to go over. I can't wait. Yeah. Take care of yourself. All right. Bye-bye. Bless. Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarians.